you didn't have a gut feeling telling you something is off and then something is up and you end up strangulated, use your whole body, all of your body. Don't do this. Do this. Okay. When you knee, don't knee like this. Knee like this. Okay. When you use your palms, don't do this. Do this. And be ready. You have to. The other person's not backing down. Use a quick, very quick movement like this with your open palm. Don't Good. Use your voice. Be super loud. Don't be nice in a situation like this. Don't be nice. Okay. I was reacting actually stuck in an elevator with a person is a nightmare. And as I said in the beginning, you gotta trust your gut. Somebody is coming in the elevator, look them in the eye. Keep going, keep at it. If somebody's trying to hurt you, you have the right to defend yourself. And Hi everybody. So last time we talked a little bit about basic self-defense skills. I was throwing my husband around, his shoulder is still painful, so I told him that today I'm not gonna do anything bad to him. One of the questions that had been asked is an elevator situation. And that's the perfect moment for me to be talking about situational awareness. So I have my husband here, who's going to demonstrate a couple of situations and I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of ways on how to handle a certain situation. So remember, we're talking situational awareness now. Imagine I'm in the elevator, and first of all, when I am in an elevator, I do not want to stand here in the very corner. I do not want to be far away from the exit, but I wanna be here, close to the alarm signal that I can press if there's ever a situation closer to the exit than when I'm way in the back. Imagine there's a situation that I'm in the elevator and so somebody comes in. So first of all, look into the person's eyes, always. Look who it is, see how your gut feels. If you're in an elevator that is not frequently having passengers go, going in and out, get out of the elevator, take the next one, okay? So situation one, somebody comes in, I look into their eyes, something tells me I don't like it, I just go. Maybe it will seem silly, but it's better safe to be sorry in a situation like this. Maybe I don't have a bad feeling, but then the person is actually, I'm gonna stay here for now, but then the person is actually looking at me in a way, I need you to see me now, come a little bit closer, looking at me in a way that just makes me feel uncomfortable. Very important, a person like this, I mean, not like my husband, but a person who's going to be a threat is not going to look for an opponent, okay? They're looking for a victim. So what you, can do and should do, look back into the person's eye, okay? You will show a lot of confidence, which ideally makes a person think twice about something. Doesn't always work, I said in the video before, everybody can become a victim to a situation, so if anything ever happened to you in the past, it's not your fault, everything can happen, anything can happen to the best of us, to the worst of us. There's no guarantee for safety, but I'm trying to show you ways on how to increase your level of safety, how to increase your protection, how to increase your chances of getting out of a situation. Because if you're a woman and there's a man having something against you, the average woman is not going to be as strong as the average man. First of all, body composition. Second of all, the average woman is smaller than the average man, okay? So, but of course a man can be victim too, and of course a woman can attack a woman, whatever, whatever, but I'm just showing this situation, okay? Because I think this is like the most horror scenario, maybe. Another situation is if he is actually going to strangle me. Strangle me right now. You have a few seconds. What you want to do is use your whole body with every movement. Use all of your body. So the first reaction might be that you wanna hold on here, but that's not going to be effective. You wanna rotate your hips as much as possible. Stick your arm up, take it from here, and then see what you can do the other. 
the person is going to be baffled in the first place, okay? See what you can do. You're gonna knee, you're gonna elbow, you can kick, okay? Kick like this. Um, yeah, so that would be one scenario. I have been asked also if a person, a woman is small, is a knee going to be effective? Yes, a knee is going to be effective, but you don't want to knee here. You want to knee in the nuts, in the nuts, in the nuts. Everything on the weakest points in the body. So you think nuts. If you wear high heels, somebody's coming too close to you, stomp on their foot. It's going to hurt like hell. It's going to be really painful. Another situation, strangle me again. You can elbow up here, okay? So you're taking the other arm, elbow up here. It's going to hurt too. Don't stop after this, don't stop. Keep going, keep at it. If somebody's trying to hurt you, you have the right to defend yourself and you want to get a person when they expect at least, okay? What could be another scenario that you could think of right now? Um, maybe if you are in the back and you're cornered. Okay, maybe if I am in the back and I'm being cornered. Hey. <laughs> okay, in a situation like this, Try to de-escalate, okay? It's not the worst situation. Um, of course, it depends on your gut feeling on how you want to react. But in a situation like this, just say, no, I don't want this. I don't want you to touch me. Super important, use your voice. Again, a person is not looking for an opponent. A person is looking for a victim. If you're looking down, if you're letting yourself be cornered, that's not good. Use your voice, be super loud, don't be nice in a situation like this. Don't be nice, okay? I was reacting actually a little bit harsh. I could have also been like, let's do it a little bit more gentle. Hey. I actually don't want you to touch me. Can you please go away? Can you please go away? Are you sure? Yes, thank you. Okay, that would be another situation that is a little bit more friendly because of course it's, it's about nuance and you gotta find what's right for you, what feels intuitive for you, you never, know how another person reacts because you're just not in another person's shoes. What I also want to show you are a couple couple of super, super, super basic stances that show you that you're ready, that show the other person that you're not doing anything, but you are prepared to do something, okay? I have a background in Muay Thai, so I'm very comfortable using my fists, I'm very comfortable using my knees, my elbows, um, kicks. But a person who does not practice any kind of combat sports, has not practiced any kind of combat sports, um, it might feel uncomfortable using your fist. I mean, ideally you never use it, but if you have not ever like punched properly and then you have to punch, uh, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. So what is very effective as well is just a stance like this, okay? A person is too close to me. Well, I would be here, I would be like more on the long end. A person is too close to me, this is the stand. You have open palms. You have open palms and your body. You have one knee or one leg up front, the leading leg and the other one in the back. With every movement, you're gonna use your hips, okay? It's all about the hips. Glute training is a must to protect yourself. This is a stance, the very basic stance that shows that you're ready to do something, but you want to de-escalate the situation. See if you can protect your chin area and see if you can protect the area around here, okay? And if you have to, the other person's not backing down, use a quick, very quick movement like this with your open palm. Don't make a fist, use your open palm. Snap the other person away, very fast. So you need to go away because I don't wanna hurt you. So you snap the other person away like this, okay? Very fast, very fast. You move one side to the other, okay? Being stuck in an elevator with a person is a nightmare. And as I said in the beginning, you gotta trust your gut. Somebody is coming in the elevator, look them in the eye. Again, if you're in an elevator and there's not a lot of people in there, you can look challenging. Um, if you're in an office building and there's like people going in and out, uh, chances are very low, nothing is impossible, but chances are low that anybody is going to, uh, to look to do harm, okay? So trust your gut again, trust the situation that you're in. You don't have to stare a person down as I just did right now, I did it very demonst demonstratively. But let's do another scenario 
where you're still being the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now you're looking for trouble. <laughs> so I was, I was ready in this situation to just be friendly and to just be normal and to just be attentive. But he was very looking for it. So of course, in a situation like this, you know, you gotta um, do something back. But overall, <laughs> no, it's fine. But overall, um, have a look at the person entering and keep in mind where you are. Uh, don't make this like your sole contribution. When in doubt, get out of the elevator. If you happen to really be stuck in an elevator with somebody who is trying to harm you, who is um, strangle, strangling, who is strangling you, you got to get out of that situation as fast as you can. You gotta use your hardest points of your body and you gotta use it on their weakest points of their body. So again, strangle me. Again, you do, you have a few seconds, okay? It was just a, it was just a short movement, but I already felt like, oh, my breath is going away, okay? If you feel like, oh, you cannot do this, you don't know what to do, always remember, you have a knee and you can pun, um, you can knee them right there, okay? Really try to train it beforehand. Really see if you can find an instructor in self-defense who can help you and who can show you techniques. And when you do those techniques, you also need to remember that the way that you're going to fight is going to look very different to what you're training. But some of the movements, that's why repetition is so important, important because some of the movements are really gonna stay with you and they're really gonna stick with you. You have another thought? Okay, my husband said that this point here is also very sensitive. So if you have the chance, if you if you feel comfortable doing it, you can use the palm of your hand. You can also use this part. You can um, bump your fist in. You can use like all of your um, sure brazo, your <laughs> all of your forearm. Um, yeah. What else? Yeah. So another movement is up the nose. Okay. Also with the open palm. The open palm is so good because it's really snappy and it's really quick and it's really effective and you don't have to be super comfortable using your fists. Um, another thing is being becoming a little bit less sensitive when it comes to your own pain, meaning that you should learn to accept some pain in your life and some pain on your body. And I think it is, again, a great way to start practicing, you know, maybe combat, but maybe ballet, super uncomfortable also. Um, but basically just anything that makes you accept your own pain a little bit more. What else? Then there's other movements, but I can talk about them next time if somebody is interested, and that is kicks. So in an elevator, you will, likely not be kicking around because there's just so little space. So what you really have, and I recommend that you use those body parts, is your knee. When you use your knee, really don't use it like this. Use it with the hip, with the hip. Train that movement until it becomes second nature. Hip, hip, hip. When you use, as I just did now with the, with the strangulation, when I go like this, I use my hip. I don't go like this, I use all of my body and my hip. Every movement, use your hip. Your elbow is your sharpest weapon on your body. If you choose to use your elbow, which you can only do very short distance, which is actually what an elevator situation would be like, when you use your elbow, always protect your own face. Always be ready to protect yourself with a part of your body, okay? I learned it the hard way. Your face needs to be protected. When you do this, when you use an elbow, block your face. Look slightly down, look at the person. I mean, like this, <laughs> basically. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. <laughs> Boy, it's really warm here. <sighs> yes, very important, something that you will definitely learn if you're doing combat sports um, or have learned already is that another person is punching you that you don't look away it is the first instinct that we want to close our eyes 
because of our reflexes that is very natural and very healthy that we do that but you gotta be able to not do that look in the person's eyes don't I mean be aware of the reflexes that you want to have and again practice please 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 find an instructor who can teach you things because I can just say those things and if you're not doing them your motor skills will not be prepared for certain situations we're going to be talking about a couple more techniques next time mm -hmm. i would say but for now this is really absolute basics um train your reflexes situational awareness situational awareness number one look at who's coming in if you're feeling uncomfortable get out just take the next elevator uh, if you didn't have a gut feeling telling you something is off and then something is off and you end up strangulated, use your whole body, all of your body. Don't do this, do this, okay? When you knee, don't knee like this, knee like this, okay? When you use your palms, don't do this, do this. And be ready in every situation. Try to de-escalate a situation. So if somebody is like, like he was just, hey, sweetie, just say, go away. Please go away, use your voice. Somebody, generally an offender, is not looking for um, an opponent. They're looking for a victim. So do all of these things. Again, no guarantee, but chances increase that you will be safe.